This is uh, week three in the series, God With Us. And uh, this week, we are really looking at the, the place where we get the phrase, God is with us. Um, it is uh, Emmanuel. Uh, I, I don't know. Did you notice today? Did you see in the two scriptures that Emmanuel was spelled differently? In the Old Testament, it was spelled with an I. In the New Testament, it was spelled with an E. And really, that's just the difference between uh, Greek and, and Hebrew. So it doesn't matter one way or another. It's the same word. So today I used I because we have neighbors down the street who use I, and so I wanted to support them uh, in their ministry and, uh, and let them know that we're thinking about them. So, Emmanuel, God with us. There's so much to get through today. I, I apologize now for running late. But I have good news. There's a place where you can go for lunch if you don't have lunch already planned. So you can come down to the potluck downstairs if you would like to. Choir's having a potluck. Uh, I was told that there are a couple of extra tables set up. So there are enough seats for people. If you would like to come to the potluck, you're invited. All right, I remembered that. Out of the way. So... Emmanuel, God with us. So let's, let's look at uh, Emmanuel is only mentioned four times in the Bible. Three times in the Old Testament, only once in the New Testament. So this is a kind of unusual word. And so it originates in Isaiah, and it, it comes from a time when the Hebrews were divided. So there was a point in history when Israel was divided into two kingdoms. It was divided into Israel in the north and Judah in the south. And so King Ahaz was the ruler of Judah in the south. And the king of the north in Israel, and there was another country, another kingdom. I'm sorry, I forgot about them. But they were, all of these countries were under the control of the Assyrians. And so the two northern kingdoms got together and they said, we are going to throw off the Assyrians, but we need King Ahaz, ah Ahaz and Judah's help. So they went to King Ahaz and Judah, and they said, hey, join us. We are going to throw off the yoke of the Assyrians. We are not going to pay tribute to them anymore. We're going to save that money in taxes. Maybe it's familiar to you about saving money on taxes, but King Ahaz said, no way. Are you kidding me? Have you seen the Assyrians? Their army's huge. They're all powerful. If we do anything like that, they're going to come and crush us. And so the two kingdoms in the north decided, hey, before we take on the Assyrians, let's get rid of Judah and Ahaz. We'll put somebody in charge of Judah who will be sympathetic with us, and then it'll be three kingdoms against the Assyrians. And so the prophet comes to King Ahaz, and he makes the prophecy. A young girl will give birth, a virgin will give birth, and you shall call him Emmanuel. King Ahaz didn't see it as a prophecy for the future. King Ahaz thought there was a girl in the kingdom that was pregnant at that moment, was going to give birth, to a son. He was going to be called Emmanuel. And the story goes on that Emmanuel would not come to the age of understanding, of knowing right from wrong, kind of adulthood, which is about 13 in the Hebrew religion, before the two kingdoms to the north that threatened King Ahaz would be completely destroyed. And so 12 years 
after this event in history, both the kingdom of Israel and the other kingdom further north had been destroyed by the Assyrians, and just Judah was left. They continued to pay tribute to the Assyrians, and they lived peaceably. So the people of the Old Testament knew that that prophecy had been fulfilled. Along comes Matthew, some, I don't know, 700, 800 years later, and he's writing down this story about his master, Jesus, and he's trying to explain to the Hebrew people who Jesus is. And he finds this obscure passage in Isaiah, and he says, Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. God is with us us. Matthew was writing the scripture that we use today trying to explain to the Hebrew people what it meant. And so he went back to this story in history and he said, yes, that story was fulfilled at the time, but it was a bigger picture that God had a plan to be with us, physically with us. And so we have been talking about the incarnation of God in Jesus Christ, God physically with us. No one called Jesus Emmanuel. Nobody called him by that name. His buddies didn't say, Immy or Manny, they didn't call him that. He was always Yeshua, Jesus. But Matthew wrote this so the Hebrew people would understand because God was with us, is with us in Jesus. Matthew and the other disciples had spent time with him. They knew who he was. Matthew was giving first-hand testimony. Saw it with his own eyes. And so first-hand testimony is always the best testimony. In fact, in a court of law, they won't let second-hand testimony in. It's called hearsay. So we try and stick with that first-hand testimony. And so here we have it with Matthew as he is talking about the only time that Emmanuel is mentioned in the New Testament. God with us. Flesh and bone. So today's sermon is about God with us and how important that is to the Christian belief system. It is essential to everything that Christianity is about that we understand that Christ is with us physically real. So, how, how do we manifest that? How do we make that possible? It's difficult. It's difficult to figure out how to do that. So, I have a couple of stories for you. So, there's a minister and his daughter, his little daughter is, it's not me. This didn't happen to me. This is a story that happened to somebody else. So his daughter is having nightmares at night. And he keeps telling his daughter, sweetie, you don't have to be afraid because Jesus is always with you. So you don't ever have to be afraid. And the little girl, one night when there's a storm, comes up to her dad and says, Daddy, Daddy, I'm afraid. And her dad, who is the minister of the church, says to her, Sweetie, you don't have to be afraid. You can go back to bed. Jesus is with you, 
and he's keeping you safe. He's protecting you. And the little girl says, yeah, I know that, Daddy. But I need, I need somebody with skin on them to protect me right now. Right? We want that physical touch. We want somebody physically with us. And that's where this sermon goes from talking about God with us as God physically with us into us being God physically with us. So the next part of my story is my story. So I went to a seminary, and in seminary, I was not a very good student. Okay, so I got C's. And the subject that I hated the most, mm, hated is the wrong word. I had a difficult time with theology. It is beyond my thought process. I am not a theological person. I do not have those words in my vocabulary. Just doesn't work for me. I have a hard time understanding it. And one day I was in theology class. There were probably 30 of us. And I felt like my head was going to explode. Just everything that that professor was saying made absolutely no sense to me. I couldn't wrap my brain around it. I thought there was something wrong with me. I had had discussions with several other students in the class. And, well, the way I deal with things is with humor. So I got up out of class during the midway break of that class. I think it was a three-hour class, which made it even harder. It was hard for me to even stay awake. And as we were leaving the classroom, one of the people that I had been having a discussion with, I said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have made it halfway through theology class. I did it as a joke, as a funny, as something humorous. Six weeks later, at the end of the class, he came to me and he said to me, thank you. I said, thank you for what? He said, I was ready to quit. I had decided that I was going to pack up my things and I was going to leave at the break. And you came up behind me and you said, well done, good and faithful servant. He said, it was like the voice of God speaking to me. And I said, you obviously don't know who you're talking to. But at that moment... I was God in flesh for that person, for that minister who stuck out the class, passed the class like I did, barely, and moved on. So the real question becomes, who is it in your life who has been God with us? Who is it in your life, as you look back, that you can see was the presence of God made flesh for you? You got that person? There have been people all through my life. I have shared stories of people in my life. Little old ladies, little old men, friends, neighbors, people that I have worked with, people that I've worked for, have been the personification of God in my life and helped me along the way. So the real question becomes, who are you going to be God for? What things in your life are you going to do to be the physical presence of God? 
You see, because God doesn't have a physical presence in this world anymore. Christ died, and he rose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and he's not here. He sent the Holy Spirit to be here with us. And that Holy Spirit empowers you and I to be the physical presence of God for those people around us. And some of you are saying, well, how? Uh, no, you got the wrong person here. So I'm going to go through some of the ways that you are the physical presence of God here in this place. If you've ever helped build a ramp, you were God with us. If you've ever made a quilt for somebody else, you're God with us. If you've ever put together a Christmas shoebox, you're God with us. If you've ever put together a school kit or a health kit, you're God with us. If you've ever helped another human being out of the love that you have for God, you are God with us. It's our responsibility as Christians to be God for people in this place. Now, I'm not saying go around and say, I'm God this week for you. No, that's not how it works. We never know. I didn't know that I was God with us as I made that joke walking out of theology class. It was just a joke. But it was those words at that moment that God needed to say to that person to continue them on their journey with Christ. Other ways. So, this is the first church I've ever been at or served that gives away all of the Christmas Eve offerings. It blew my mind when I first heard it. I had always dreamed of doing it at a church that I served. The first church that I served was so small and so poor that I didn't have the guts to ask it. And the second church that I served was so big and so, well, country clubbish that when I mentioned it, they said, well, we get 10% of our annual budget from our Christmas Eve offering. We can't afford to do that. And I came here, and I heard, and I said, you guys give all of your Christmas Eve offering? They, yeah. What else do you do? I was so floored. It was amazing. And so this year, all of the Christmas Eve offering is going to go. It's going to go to two places. It's going to go to uh, Light the Way, which it stays here in Ohio, and it helps United Methodist churches who are in need, and it also helps with new church starts. So it's a program in our conference, and there have been, I believe there have been eight or ten new church starts, and there have been many churches that have been helped by Light the Way. And the second thing that we're going to give to is UMCOR, National Disasters. So when we sit in mission meetings, we say to one another, well, there's not really any big natural disaster that has occurred here lately, so I don't know if people will give to it, and there's a discussion about it, and we decided to do it, and then this weekend happened. So you, on Christmas Eve, get to be God with us. God with us in what it is that you give to help other people out. All through December, there are a thousand opportunities to help other people. There's a thousand opportunities to be God with us. But I want to say to you that I hope it isn't just a Christmas season event because those same needs occur in January and February and March and every month of the year, not just November and December. And I hope that you will be God with us, that you will give 
Give of your time, give of your money, give of your love to help people and to be God with us. This year coming and this year closing. And remember, like the little girl, every once in a while, we all need somebody with some skin on them to be with us. Will you pray with me? God of grace and mercy, we give thanks that you are with us. Oh, Emmanuel, help us. Help us this day to be you more and more each day to be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go forth from this place assured that God is with us. In Jesus' name, amen.